The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is the beginning of our gospel reading for this past Sunday, the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. We're looking at Mark chapter 8, verses 27 to 29. Jesus and his disciples went to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, Who do people say I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Peter answered, You are the Christ. My dear friends in Christ, at the time of our reading, Jesus' public ministry was rapidly coming to a close. And because it was coming to a close like that, what Jesus was often doing is withdrawing a bit more from the crowds because he had some heavy-duty instruction of his disciples to do so that they would be able to carry on and be Jesus' witnesses after Jesus accomplished his work, after he ascended into heaven. But to get his disciples to think seriously about who he was and what he had come to this earth to accomplish, Jesus asked the disciples, Who do people say I am? The disciples' answer to that question reveals that, well, many of the people who had come into contract, contact with Jesus during his public ministry, they looked at him and thought of him as being someone very, very special. But tragically, what we'd have to say is that many, maybe most of those people looked at Jesus and thought of him as if he was just another man. That he was special to them in the same way in which people like George Washington, Thomas, Thomas Jefferson, or Abraham Lincoln would be special men in our opinions. And, well, when you think about it, views about Jesus, they haven't changed a whole lot in the past 2,000 years. So many people today still think about Jesus as just being a very special man. Many years ago, there was a movie that was entitled The Last Temptation of Jesus Christ. And maybe you can remember the play or the musical that was entitled Jesus Christ Superstar. Both of those productions, they portrayed Jesus as a bit of a weak individual who had troubles with the Sixth Commandment, who often broke the Sixth Commandment. Anyone who believes that Jesus is true God and is the Savior, of course, is going to be offended by productions like that, by anyone who would think about Jesus and say he was just a man. However, we need to realize that the ideas promoted in those productions about Jesus being just a man, they're more commonly accepted in our world than maybe we would suspect or maybe we do realize it. The fact of the matter is, is that many liberal pastor training schools, liberal meaning nothing with their politics, Liberal meaning that they say that the Bible isn't completely true and without error. They say that the Bible has all kinds of errors in it, that it isn't God's infallible word. They teach their students often that Jesus was just a man. And such views are probably going to become more and more common as we go on in this sinful world because so-called enlightened people, they reject God's wisdom and put their own human wisdom above God's wisdom. 
especially if they don't agree with what God says in his word, especially with what God's laws would say to them. Therefore, it's important that we, people who, well, by God's grace are believing children of God, that we know that Jesus is our Savior, that he is true God. That, well, that as we know that, we dare to be disciples of Jesus by being bold to confess Christ as our Savior, as the Apostle Peter did in our reading for today. When Jesus asked the disciples, but what about you? Who do you say I am? Well, by the grace of God, the Apostle Peter was able to respond to that, you are the Christ. And he was able to make that confession because the Holy Spirit was at work in him, because the Holy Spirit enabled him to make that confession. It, it wasn't really Peter, it was the Holy Spirit enabling him. Well, by God's grace, the Holy Spirit is also at work in us. So let's not hesitate, but let's be bold, like Peter was at that particular time, to make the same confession that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is the promised one, our Savior and the Savior of the world. But of course we have to recognize that there will be times in our lives when it's hard to make that confession. There was an occasion, a special gathering, when Frederick the Great, a Prussian king from back in the 1700s, when Frederick was making very coarse jokes about Jesus. And Frederick's general, he professed to be a Christian, and, and when he heard those coarse jokes about Jesus, that upset him terribly. That upset him terribly, and he had to feel very tempted. That general had to feel very tempted that maybe what he should do is just keep his mouth shut. After all, Frederick was the king, and he was a great king. He was a powerful king. But what he did is he told that powerful king that he was blaspheming his God, his Savior. He was cursing the Savior. The general probably had to wonder if he was going to lose his head over, over his charges for making such an accusation. But all the king could really say to him was the simple words, I beg your pardon. It wasn't easy for that general to make the confession that he did. But just think about the amazing witness that he made for Christ that day. May God help us also to be bold to confess Christ as our Savior. The Holy Spirit, he may be able to use our confession, our being bold to confess Christ as our Savior to win more and more souls to the gospel the faith in Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us faith in Jesus, our Savior. Help us, like Peter, to be bold to confess Christ as our Savior and the Savior of the world so more and more people can be reached with the gospel. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.